I mean, my main opinion about an existential risk is that it makes sense to explicitly think about it. Okay, so what does X risk really mean? What does it mean? Yeah, so I think uh, the term existential risk was coined to refer to roughly, you know, uh, things that could cause the extinction of the human race or, uh, or maybe all life on Earth or something that would uh, curtail human progress uh, in such a drastic way that it's comparably bad to sort of complete extinction. So that's, I think, what people mean when they say X risk or existential risk. Okay, um, so, but, uh, okay, so what, what's the value in thinking about this? Yeah, and so, how should we think about it? right, right, so, um, so a lot of people, you know, have opinions about um, the question of existential risk, like, is there existential risk? Are we at risk as a species of complete destruction or not? A lot of people have opinions about that, and, uh, or also have opinions about the nature of the risk that we might face, like, you know, is global warming an extinction risk? Is, is artificial intelligence an extra risk? Is bioterrorism an extra risk? Asteroids? Volcanoes? Um, so, you know, sounds like a bunch of doomsday talk. Um, and I think, I think that spending all your time thinking about this kind of thing is basically, you know, not uh, necessarily a good use of your time. On the other hand, uh, you know, uh, if you think about an individual person, how much, you know, how much do you or I personally spend explicitly reasoning about how to avoid our own deaths? Um, you know, I certainly do many things that indirectly avoid death, like I try to be healthy because being healthy makes me feel good, um, and that indirectly causes me to avoid death in the same way that maybe the world tries to avoid political conflicts for immediate reasons, which then indirectly makes it less likely to have a global catastrophic war. Um, but then there are certain things that I think about in my own life to explicitly avoid death. You know, like I'm putting my seatbelt on because I don't want to die, you know. Uh, or, you know, I'm avoiding eating shellfish because I don't want to die because I have, you know, an allergy. An allergy. Um, so in the same way, you know, how many minutes, maybe, maybe first ask how many minutes a year do you spend, you know, explicitly reasoning about, uh, your own death, and the answer is probably more than a minute, you know. Um, and if you look at the fraction of a, a minute to a year, you know, it's, uh, you know, let's say, maybe, is it, is it, or maybe it's more like 10 minutes. Well, how many 10 minutes are there in a day? You know, let's say there's uh, a thousand, maybe, um, and then there's maybe, you know, 300 days in a year, so 300,000, you know, one three, maybe one three hundred thousandth of a year you spend reasoning about your death. And I think, I think that's a reasonable sort of anchor point for wondering, all right, how much of the world's cognitive research resources uh, should we spend? And it's better than nothing, it's better than totally, I, I don't think it's actually probably a reasonable answer, but just as a starting point, uh, maybe think about what's, what's a three hundred thousandth of the world's total resources, research and development, uh, resources, if you take into account, you know, all that, you know, uh, both academic and business research that happens. And uh, the answer is probably, you know, you know, many millions of dollars with maybe a billion. And so uh, I think that in that sense, having institutes and, you know, places of research like the Cambridge Center for Existential Risk, which is now just getting started. I'm very happy about that, because I think on the margin, the world could use more explicit reasoning about preventing, you know, disasters. Um, not that any individual person should spend all their time worrying about it, because <laughs> I don't think that's healthy, but that the world, as a, as a, you know, manager of its own cognitive resources, I think could totally use to put more into that, in that pool. And, uh, so now, you know, Jan Tallinn, you know, co-creator of Skype, is, you know, supporting the creation of uh, the Cambridge Center for Study of Existential Risk. Martin Rees, the famous cosmologist, is heading that up. And Stephen Hawking just joined the board of advisors. Super excited about that. I think it's a very good uh, direction for the world to move in. What's at stake? I mean, what about our future? What's, what, what wonderful things in the future are we going to miss out on? Right, right, right. right, right. Stuff goes 
Yeah, I mean, you know, when I think about the future of the human race, it's sort of, it's just a high variance probability distribution, you know, it's like, you know, anyone who reads science fiction will have as well informed, you know, an idea of this society, it's just, you know, it could be some amazing utopia, we could have space travel, you know, we could have immortality, we could have, or near, you know, we could have maybe aging gets cured, maybe, uh, maybe all kinds of social, uh, I'm playing this thing, maybe all kinds of, uh, uh, social problems get resolved, or maybe not, maybe, maybe it becomes a complete dystopia and, you know, certain problems magnify and amplify and spiral out of control and we just end up, you know, in some state of perpetual terribleness, or maybe we, or maybe we self-destruct, or maybe things continue to be roughly, you know, okay, like they, if you, if you call the current state of the world okay, then maybe things remain okay, so, uh, you know, all I can do is remain open-minded to, you know, all the different possibilities and, you know, I can I can try to have my own opinions about it, um, but uh, ultimately, ultimately, you know, what I want is for everyone to to sort of think hard and and work together on this. And I think saying, you know, I think that this is I think this is what the world's going to miss out on, or this is the way it's going to end up. I think that it's I don't think that my opinion should carry enough weight to be worth the bias that it would create create uh, in me personally announcing, you know, what I think the world's going to miss out on if it, uh, self-destructs. But, uh, certainly could be really great. Could be really lame, too. But, uh, I'm hopeful. Mm -hmm. In any case, the, by default, if we self-destruct, we don't get to find out. By default, if we self-destruct, we do not get to find out. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Excellent.